Hi, in this video I'll explain about work done by a gas and before we get into the equations I would like you to have a look of a gas actually expanding in a cylinder and pushing a piston uh, that gives a feel of the forces exerted by a gas we're talking of expansion and uh, the expansion could happen under different uh, conditions as per the uh, PV diagrams that I explained in a previous animation. So in this chapter we will cover a general PV diagram. We will talk about isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, isobaric expansion and the isochoric process. And I did not say isochoric expansion because the volume is constant in an isochoric uh, process. So we will cover quite a lot of topics here within 10 minutes. This is the familiar PV diagrams and you have seen this before in a previous animation and there are four kinds of graphs between pressure and volume. A few words about the first law of thermodynamics will be in order. The increase in internal energy delta U of a gas can happen only if we do some work on it, we shake it up, that's delta W when we shake up the gas, do some work on it and we could give it some heat, if we provided some heat, delta Q then of course the energy, the internal energy of the gas will increase. This is common sense. But if the gas does some work, we are not doing the work on the gas, but the gas is doing some work by pushing the piston, it's of course opposite of a positive de delta W, so it's considered as a minus delta W. That's work done by the gas. Please note the negative sign for the work done by the gas. In terms of derivation, work is force into distance, as we saw in Newtonian uh, physics. The force here is the force by the gas, and the distance is the distance moved by the piston, which could be small dx, because we are here considering a quasi-static process, which is infinitely slow at every point it's in equilibrium. So if we go through the derivations, force is pressure into area, and if we combine area into dx, it becomes dv. So work done is p into dv. We'll take a look at that more in detail subsequently. Here's a lovely graph which shows how to integrate P into dV. So you divide the area under the curve into thin rectangles. So the y-axis is pressure, the x-axis is volume. You multiply these two guys and you get a third guy called the work done. That's as per the principle of integration. And if you have a close look at this, each rectangle is a very thin rectangle. The width is dv. The number of rectangles will determine how accurate it is. The more the number of rectangles, as the number of rectangles tends to infinity, the dv will become thinner and thinner and the p will be read off the y-axis uh, as per where we are on that graph. So if you could have p1 into dv, plus P2 into dV, plus P3 into dV will be the sum of each one of these rectangles and that's the principle of integration. So as we say limit extends to infinity, if limit of the number of rectangles tends to infinity, we'll close up those holes that you see between the rectangles and the red graph. The more holes we close, the more accurate the integration. We now come to the area under the curve for isothermal expansion, which is the first case. So W is integral P dV, as we saw. PV is equal to NRT for an ideal gas. So P becomes a function of V and P is equal to NRT into 1 by V. Then inside the integral you will have integral 1 by V dV and NRT will come out of the integral because it's a constant. R is a constant. And in an isothermal expansion, T is a constant because temperature is a constant. Because of that, the minus nRT comes out of the integral. And as I said before, the minus is because the gas is doing work by pushing the piston. So the work done in an isothermal expansion is minus nRT ln V2 by V1 as per the mathematics formula for the integral of 1 by V dV. And that's pretty simple to calculate and you'll be able to solve any question that comes on isothermal expansion. We should now have a look at the next 
type, which is the adiabatic expansion. In this expansion, the general formula that the work is integral PDV still holds. That won't change. And I had said earlier that adiabatic expansion is a steep hyperbolic graph. So P1, V1 to the power gamma is what is used here, not the equation for the ideal gas. And when you use that equation, you get the pressure between two points on the hyperbolic graph corresponding to two volume points V2 and V1. Again, work done by the gas on the system is negative work. So work here comes to minus P1 integral V2 by V1 to the power gamma and it's a definite integral that works as per the mathematics uh, formula. If you look closely at this and at the graph itself, during expansion the isothermal graph is at a higher level and the adiabatic graph is lower below the isothermal graph, assuming both start at the same point, which means that the work done in an adiabatic expansion is less than the work done in an isothermal expansion. So back to the PV diagram, we have covered two of the critical curves in this, the isothermal and the adiabatic, and we should now take a look at what's the work done by the gas in an isobaric process and what's the work done by the gas in an isochoric process using the same general formula integral PDV. For an isobaric expansion, the green line in that graph, P is constant, that's why it's isobaric. So only V is changing. So the area under the curve becomes a rectangle because P is a straight line. So if you look at the integration of integral PDV, P being constant in this particular case comes out of the integral and it simply becomes integral of dV which is V, V2 minus V1. So it becomes P into V2 minus V1. It becomes very simple. So for any work done by the gas on the piston keeping the pressure constant at all points in the quasi-static infinitely slow process you will find work done from this equation. We are left with only one graph now which is the vertical one which is the isochoric process where the pressure is reducing but the volume is the same. The volume is not changing, the gases are in the same volume, the piston is not moving at all. In such a case, using the general formula, work done is integral P dV. dV itself is zero, so the work done is zero. There is no work done in this case. So I hope it was uh, simple to understand the work done, area under the graph, the principle of integration and how you arrive at the work done by a gas on the system in four different conditions. Thank you and have a great day.